Right, welcome back to the channel and the XGR6. Hope you'll forgive me, I've not really done much content on the XGR6, especially recently. I've been tinkering with it ever so slightly. Um, so let's catch up. So from the last video, the car did develop um, just a really annoying habit. And that was essentially the throttle kept sort of hanging, you know, sort of stuck open um, every now and again, which is, is quite, quite problematic, to be honest. It's not uncommon for these to get dirty throttle bodies. That tends to be because the breather system on this car literally does, obviously as a hose comes off the uh, cam cover, um, pulls a vacuum, and then loads of crud comes out the top of the engine, and goes into the intake elbow um, and then basically straight into the throttle. So there is a tendency there to, um, there is a tendency for the throttle bodies to over time just get sort of coated in crud and they can't work properly. On pretty much any other car, like that's not, not too much of a problem. You just get some throttle body cleaner and um, yeah, you spray, get, get a rag and spray away and, and clean it all out. On one of these though, it's a complete pain because the throttle body is mounted under the intake manifold straight onto the back of the um, supercharger, basically, or the supercharger bypass, technically. So, I mean, it's a ridiculously inaccessible place. And of course, to clean the throttle body properly, you have to take it off the car so you can fully access both sides. Anyway, so got the throttle body off, but this time, yeah, really attacked the um, idle valve with a, with a brush this time as well, and the cleaners going in. Put it all back on the car, and yeah, problem solved. Um, it was, luckily it was exactly what I thought it was. It's one of those rare occasions. So yeah, everything went back together, um, and it's now absolutely fine, uh, running really well, and the revs don't hang up anymore. I've also installed a uh, catch can. It's a closed system, not a vented. Should be a vacuum coming off the supercharger bypass, pulling those gases through, and they now go th through the catch can, which is baffled. Obviously, the idea behind that is it all as as the gas as the gases flow through, there's a lot more there that's going to take all that all that crud out of the equation so hopefully that won't make its way through the rest of the intake system and clog up my idle valve again so that's the theory anyway we'll see if that actually holds true right so i just thought i'd check in on our catch can to see how it's going see what kind of stuff it's picking up so i've taken out the kind of i put this kind of extra gauze in there just to make sure that um everything that was going in couldn't get back out again in the bottom of the can, there's all this. I mean, it's literally, I mean, it's only been in there a few weeks and it's caught all that stuff. Um, fairly disgusting, to be honest. Uh, yeah, so this is a definitely a, a, a sort of a worthwhile mod because otherwise all of that stuff would have been going through the throttle body and yeah, clogging up idle valve and the throttle butterfly and all that stuff. Uh, not ideal. Okay, so I do just want to talk about um, Auto Alex and his his XJR that he's now converted to manual in the last episode there. So if you've not seen that, yeah, I thoroughly recommend you uh, have a look at his um, XJR uh, videos as well. But what I thought, the reason why I'm talking about this now is that the last episode they were sort of saying that if they, you know, if, if Auto Alex goes up against uh, Drive Tribe um, and, and their, their Jags, um, then they're they're at a disadvantage, which, like in one sense they are, but what they didn't mention is that you look at if you look at purely at the peak horsepower figures, then yeah it's down the six is down against the V8, but if you look at the torque figures, they're virtually the same. I mean remember the the six and the V8 have the same displacement, um, they make around the same amount of torque. So it's not at that much of a, a disadvantage, to be honest. Um, the biggest restriction for horsepower on the 
6 is the supercharger itself. So it's Eaton M90 on the 6 and it's a 112 uh, on the V8 and the 90 and 112 are the, the cubic capacity uh, of those superchargers. And what I was going to say was on, on Alex's car, I'm surprised they've not done anything with that M90 because the, the M90 is a Gen 3, the M112 is a Gen 5 Eaton supercharger and between those generations they made the superchargers more efficient. So it's not just that the 112 has got a bigger capacity, it's, it's more efficient at the top end as well. But you can have you can have an Eaton M90 that is efficient and is as efficient as an M112 um, by porting and polishing it, uh, coating the rotors, you know the the custom bearing plate with the trapped air ports and and stuff like that. And if you do all that, you basically end up with a supercharger that is just as efficient as as its bigger brother. You can you can then spin up the M90 a bit quicker, and it just keeps that kind of that air charge uh, cooler. Uh, and if it's cooler, you make more power. Uh, there, are, there is the expertise out there, of course, to swap out the M90 for the M112 or even a later TVS. But, you know, that gets very expensive. Uh, in my mind, my car with its modified M90 feels more than fast enough for the road. You know, that got me thinking um, because I've got, a, I've, I've got a data logger now. I bought one of those for um, my 911. I've never hooked up the data logger to the Jag um, until now. And to my, you know, to my amazement, not only is the Jag kind of as fast as it feels, it's actually faster than my Porsche. So here we're comparing my XJR6 against my uh, 1999 911 Carrera 2 manual with a 3.7. Now I have put in brackets here, break-in period, because these stats were taken during the break-in period for that engine. Um, I do expect if I did this again now, um, these stats to be uh, a little bit better. But it has to be said, I don't think my Porsche is ever going to be um, faster in terms of in-gear acceleration than the XJR. Just looking at these, looking at these figures and comparing them, I would say that uh, whilst my XJR6 is 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 fantastic, kind of in-gear acceleration. It's always had one like massive problem, and that's grip. Um, it basically hasn't got any, and it's one of those things. So it's basically the reason why I can't seem to get a better not sixty time than around five seconds at the moment, um, no matter how hard I try. Because um, if basically if you go anywhere near full throttle in first gear, you're just spinning up the wheels. That's all you're doing. Um, I think my my tires are just completely inadequate. So if I if I'm serious about posting a, a decent 0 to 60 time, or if I want to, you know, take it uh, if I want to take the car to Santa Pod drag racing or whatever, I will need to invest in much better tires. So that's something I need to I need to think about. And this is the thing. So like looking at looking at my you know the the, the figures from my Porsche here. I mean I know you know in gear it's slower. Than the Jag, but in in you know in their current setups, if I was to do a 0 to 60 in the Porsche, I know that the Porsche has tons of grip, and it can deploy all of its power, and it would post a quicker 0 to 60 time than the Jag, even though the Jag has a much higher potential because of the complete lack of grip. So that's something I need to address. But I haven't just got the figures from my Porsche to compare to; I've got. Uh, figures taken from a an XJR6 manual like mine, but that had been converted to a an Eaton M112 supercharger. So this supercharger is the same one uh, as is on the the four liter V8 XK and, and XJR. If you compare these two, you can see that the figures aren't actually that different, and that is not because there's not much of a difference between the two two superchargers. There absolutely is quite a big difference between the two. But I know for a fact that this car here, the M M one twelve conversion car, has the factory standard dual mass flywheel, massively heavy flywheel. My car, on the other hand, has 
um, much like Alex's car, um, a solid state flywheel taken from a different kind of Jag. But I think in in the Auto Alex video, when Tom Lenthal was talking about that, he, he just sort of said that he would clean up the flywheel and then put it on the car. He didn't mention if he'd lighten it first. Mine was all, my car was all prepped by Swallows Racing. So they, they took that flywheel and then they lightened it further as well. And they fitted it up to the car with the Helix um, paddle clutch, like what Auto Alex has done and, and the racing uh, pressure plate. So my car has that as a, as a massive advantage. It's got a lot less um, rotating mass. So you know, when I put my foot down, that is transferred much more easily to, to the rear wheels. And, and this is key, really, um, the key thing to point out, because this car here has, uh, I think it's estimated over 400 horsepower, and yet my 355 horsepower, six, look at, for the most part, is keeping up with it. Um, and it, you know, in certain circumstances, it's a little bit quicker in places, because it's, you know, it's got that, got that lightweight flywheel and that makes all the difference and which is why in the auto alex video they're talking about you know axle ratios um sticky tires flywheels and stuff like that because i think a lot of attention was put on the fact that they hadn't made any extra power um in terms of peak power um but honestly it doesn't matter it, it's all about setup all the gains all the important gains will be low to mid range torque and i know that you know for example my car 400 foot pounds of torque at two and a half thousand rpm uh if that was to go up against you know a let's say hammond to this standard v8 xjr there's absolutely no way that that putting its power through a torque converter automatic would be quicker than a, a modified straight six manual absolutely no way now you know mike fernie's xk with all that power i'm i'm you know i'm not sure about i'm not sure about that one i mean that that's going to be set up by swallows so i, I don't necessarily think that auto Alex can beat that you know heavily modified xkr but i you know hopefully you can see you know it's, it's all about how the cars are set up to be honest what's next for this so yeah like, I, i'm gonna think about I'm going to think about the drag racing thing. I mean, I think it would be fun. Um, but what I also want to do with this is... Um, I kind of want to go drifting with it as well. Um, I think that would be fun. So I need, to, I need to really think about this because... What I don't want to do is like buy really nice, grippy Michelins, take it drag racing, and then the year after take it drifting because then I'll ruin my you know, quite expensive Michelins. What I could do instead is look at look at drifting it with the tyres it's currently got on it, and then replace the tyres, and then take it drag racing after that. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. But apart from that, like I say, there's not much else to come from this car. I mean, like I say, mechanically, I think about putting that fancy diff in it. Might um, get in touch with Tom Lenthal and uh, see if I can get a quote for that. But apart from that, I mean, it's just so good. It drives, it drives so good. It drives like a brand new car. Um, well, it, it does need paint, though. So that's going to be a big thing one year i am going to have to get this give this a full respray there's no two ways about it it looks nice on film but honestly the, the, you know this car has been touched up and it's had bits of paint here and there some of that paint is like 10 11 years old and it's gone matte and it needs a lot of machine polishing to even look half presentable and i just can't do that every every few months anymore so yeah it, it needs to come off and it needs to be resprayed so that'll have to be done at some point but i mean yeah auto alex's car i'm liking what's been done to the gearbox i don't think messing with the gearing in the back is a good idea like long term then these these aren't that great on fuel or as it is you know and the idea of it being even worse um, <laughs> because you've put like a really short diff in it is um, 
not great. I just can't, I still can't quite believe it if I'm honest. Here I am, I'm cruising through the countryside in, you know, absolute comfort in something that is faster than my modified sports car. But it is what it is. So that's it for this one. That's your uh, XJR update for now. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for the support. Remember to drop a like if you want to see more XJR content. And uh, yeah, see you for the next one.